Hey everybody, Melon here. Welcome to another episode of Teardown. Today we're going to be tearing down the OGM Cloud V2 or the Crimson Line Cloud or the Hawkeye Cloud, depending on what version you get, but I'm just going to call it the Cloud V2 to keep things simple here. Now the OGM Cloud V2 is pretty much exactly the same as the previous cloud. There are some small differences in terms of the internal build quality, but it's pretty much the exact same. Now as with all previous YSL mice like the OGM Pro V2 and of course the Cloud V1, their mice have always been very serviceable and that continues here to an extent extent here with the OGM Cloud V2 as there is some unique choices in the inside here in terms of opening the unit. But we're going to talk about that much much more in today's episode of Teardown. But before we get into it you will need a couple things. Firstly having a microfiber cloth to keep your mouse in place would be advisable. Having a set of precision screwdriver sets will be a must because you do need a specific screw to get this unit open unlike Wisevel's previous mice but I'll talk about that in a moment. And you also need somebody to keep track of your screws. I like to use an ice cube tray but you can use pretty much whatever you want. But once you have all your tools you're ready to go ahead and get started so let's dive into today's episode of teardown now the first thing we have to do is go ahead and remove the four skates from the base of the unit but you might have noticed that these are not traditional phillips head screws like the ones we saw on the ogm pro v2 these are torx bits which is a little odd so in order to get the crimson line version specifically open you will need a torx bit to get them open i'm not sure about the other cloud colorways i believe the regular hawkeye version and the other versions are just still using the regular phillips head screws but i haven't been able to confirm that with Wise Owl yet. So if you're going to mod or take apart the Cloud V2, I'd recommend getting a Torx bit or just having one on hand in case you need it. But once you have that bit, we can go ahead and remove the four base screws. And then once you have all those out, just like we've done with all the previous Wise Owl mice, you want to take two of your hands and make kind of a claw and put a little pressure on the sides of the mouse. And with enough pressure on the back, it will pop open just like that. And then you can run your finger along the side of the mouse to disconnect the two shells. Just like that. And then once they're off, you can just pull the top shell off from the bottom and they'll come apart just like that. Again, just like all the previous YSL mics, there is no ribbon cable running from the top to the bottom. So it's very, very easy to take these shells apart. So let's go ahead and start off with this top shell first. We'll put the base off to the side for later. All right, now starting off with the top shell, first thing we can do is remove these side buttons. All you want to do for this is put your fingers on the side of the mouse like this, and then just get your fingernail and just pull behind here. Now this may take a little bit of pressure to do, but with enough pressure, they will pop out of the shell just like that. They're installed hanging off of these little studs on the side, so it's kind of like taking apart a Lego brick. It can be a little tricky sometimes, but with enough pressure, they'll come off. Next up, we can also remove the main clicks here. Now these are thankfully using just regular Phillips head screws. You can go back to a Phillips head bit for the rest of this teardown. Now, just like the previous cloud, the clicks do have a very thick end to them. So you can't really get your fingernail underneath them. So I'd recommend getting a flathead screwdriver bit and just pressing on the bottom and just lifting them up that way. Now, once you get them off, you'll need to kind of push and pull the clicks forward out of the shell. They don't fall out naturally like a lot of Wise Owl's other clicks do. So just keep that in mind. We'll do the same thing here. And once they're off, push and pull out just like this. Again, they're mounted on these very thick studs just like the side buttons are. So the main clicks are a little harder than the other clicks to get out. They're definitely harder than the original Cloud's clicks to get out, but they are still removable, which is nice to see. And that's everything for the top shell here. Again, just like all Wise Owl's previous mice, pretty easy to do a little harder than the other mice we've tried, but still doable nonetheless. And now we can focus on the base shell next. Now, the first thing you might notice on the base shell is this rather um, unique battery installation here. The the Cloud V1 had a similar installation method, but the battery was kind of like on an angle and this was much shorter, but they've raised it for some reason here in the Cloud V2. I'm not exactly sure why, because this is a bunch of added weight to the unit, but I mean, it is what it is. Now the top of the battery is held in by this little kind of brace here on the top shell here, but I feel like there were much better ways to anchor this battery. They could have just laid it flat or some reason. Like I don't really know why they have to install it vertically like this, but regardless, it is what it is. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and remove our battery. We'll just take our fingernails and go on the side of this J T connector, wiggle it off and pull up like this. Now, another oddity about this version in particular, my version doesn't have the adhesive taken off. It's just loosely installed in here, which is kind of surprising. So the battery is very easy to remove on this version. This may be a defect from the factory. Maybe they just forgot to do it, but regardless, it's easy to remove this, which is nice to see. But unfortunately, due to the sizing of this piece here, you can't really mod in a larger battery as you're kind of stuck with space limitations here. You could put in a smaller one if you wanted to, but bigger ones are going to be 
bit of a problem. Also, if you do end up putting in a smaller battery because of the extra space here, it's gonna rattle around all the time. Next up, we can go ahead and remove our side button PCB so we can remove a screw from here and a screw from here. And then once that's off, you can just grab from the side here and just pull these off here. And then that will expose the ribbon cable on the bottom. And then you can just take your fingernails, just pull up this connector here. Just be very careful with this cable and gently pull up to remove the side button PCB, which we'll put off to the side for later. And then lastly, we can go ahead and remove the main board itself by removing a screw from here, 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 and here. And then once those screws are out, we can just take a fingernail and pull up from the bottom of the board here and the board will come off just straight off the top of the mouse just like that. We can put that off to the side for a moment. And lastly, we have the bottom base buttons, which just like the OGM Pro V2, will fall out of the shell once you turn them over. But thankfully, the side buttons have the same kind of little nicks in there that correspond to the little pegs on the board here, so it's very easy to reinstall these, which is a great attention to detail. And lastly, we can go ahead and remove our scroll wheel by just gently pulling from the side of the mouse just like that. All right, now that's pretty much everything for our disassembly process. Let's talk about the board specs next. So starting off with the side button PCB, we have the Wano black shell white dot switches. These are, I'm very happy to see here as opposed to the weird kale blue bottom green dot switches we saw in the OGM Pro V2. Those were just a weird switch. These ones feel significantly better and I wish I could put these in my OGM Pro V2, but sadly the design of the board is different. And then next up we have the main board itself. We have our Hawkeye V1 or Pixar 3950 main sensor. We have our Nordic 52840 MCU here. We have a very unique looking level two or three Wano black shell red dot switch definitely a little bit of a unique looking switch we have our wano green shell white dot main clicks which is very different from the wano blue shell pink dot switch we commonly see but they actually feel surprisingly good and here we have our ttc silver 11 millimeter encoder the board itself just like the ogm pro v2's board is also decently weight optimized they've shaved off a little bit of weight here which is nice to see great attention to detail as per usual from wise owl Alrighty, well now that we've talked about board specs and all that fun stuff let's talk about weight next now keep in mind my scale is still broken it's still giving inaccurate measurements. So my web measurements will be like a gram or so off. Keep that in mind. I'm sorry, my new scale hasn't arrived yet. I ordered it and it just hasn't shown up from Amazon yet. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. But in terms of right now, just keep in mind, my measurements will be slightly off by about a gram. Starting off, let's use the bottom shell which is weighing in at around 10.6, 10.5 grams. The two bottom base buttons are weighing in at around 0.43 grams. The top shell is weighing in at around 15.5 grams. The two main clicks are weighing in around 7.3, 7.4 grams. The side buttons are weighing in around 0.8 grams. The scroll wheel is weighing in around 1.7 grams. The main board is weighing in around 9.5 grams. Side button PCB weighs in around 2.26 grams. And the 300 milliamp hour battery is weighing in around 5.9 grams and all the screws inside the Cloud V2 weigh in around 1.2 grams. All right, now that we've weighed all our components, let's go ahead and start our reassembly process. First off, let's start off with the main board here. We can go ahead and reinstall our scroll wheel by taking the thinner end of the scroll wheel and putting it into that hole in the encoder. So just gently line it up and gently press it into the encoder just like that. We'll put this off to the side for now, and then we can work on the bottom shell next. Now, just like we saw in the OGM Pro V2, the bottom buttons have these little nicks in them that correspond to a little standoff here on the bottom board. This prevents you from putting the buttons in the wrong hole, which I really appreciate, because a lot of the times companies don't do this and trying to figure out where the buttons go is a nightmare. So I'm very happy to see this really cool attention to detail here from Wise Owl. So you can just go ahead and reinstall your base buttons here. They just kind of gently sit into here, and you can see the DPI one goes on the right side of the mouse and the power one goes Goes on the left side of the mouse. We can flip that back over now. And then next up, we can go ahead and put back in our main board, just like we did in the Pro V2. All we do is just basically drop the board right on here, aligning with the standoffs here for the scroll wheel. Just drop it straight down just like that and then press down to click it into place. And you can tell this made proper contact because the standoffs will be roughly even with the surface of the PCB, just like that. Next, we can go re-anchor our four mainboard screws. All right, and then once we've re-anchored our mainboard here, next up, we can go ahead and re-anchor our side button PCB. So to do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and open up this little attachment just like this and we'll push it into the open position. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to take the end of this ribbon cable and we're going to just gently slot it into the hole in the encoder just like that and then we're going to flip the unit over onto the other side and you want to make sure this cable is roughly even with the board itself so you want it to sit like that and then you can clip this down just like that into place to secure that and then we can go ahead and re-anchor the board by just lining it up with its little standoffs here on the board and just pressing down on the sides to click it into place 
Next up, we can go ahead and put back in the two anchoring screws. And then next up, we can go ahead and re-anchor our battery. Now again, mine didn't have the adhesive taken off, so I was able to remove mine, but yours may actually be stuck in here. So keep in mind, you may or may not be able to remove it. I was able to on mine, but regardless, just slap the battery back into its little positioning here. It just kind of fits in there snugly. And then you can just take the sides of this JSD connector, just gently put it into its connector just like this, and then just take your two fingernails, press in on the sides to anchor it in just like that. Now, before we move on, what I recommend doing is turning your unit on, and I'd recommend testing everything before we put the shells back together. So test your side buttons, test your main clicks, test your scroll wheel, scroll go click, test the sensor, just make sure everything works before you put the unit back together. If your side buttons don't work for whatever reason, it's most likely because the ribbon cable isn't down enough or it's uneven, causing some connectivity issues. If this is the case, just go ahead and remove the side button PCB and re-anchor this cable, and that should fix the issue. But once you verify that everything is working on your cloud, you can go ahead and turn the unit back off, and we can go ahead and start our reassembly of the top shell next. All right, now the first thing we're gonna do here with the top shell is re-anchor the main clicks, which can be a little tricky due to the thicker end on these clicks, but I'll walk you guys through the whole process. So just like we saw in the OGM Pro V2, what you wanna do is you wanna take this little stabilizer right here, and you want this piece to go over this little piece just right here. So to do this, put the click in through the bottom of the shell just like this. It is a little snug, so just keep that in mind. And then you wanna just push the clicks in and see how you can push it over just like that and then once that's done these should be roughly lined up and you can press down to click the clicks into place we'll do the same one with the next click here we'll go ahead feed it through the bottom and up through the top here press it over and then we'll go here and click it into place just like that now just take your thumb and just press these down as hard as you can for this next step. And then you're gonna go ahead and re-anchor the two screws into the central hole here. Now, as always, when you're re-anchoring these screws, be extremely careful. Do not over-tension these screws because if you over-tension these screws, you will break your main clicks. Screw these screws in until you feel a little bit of resistance and then stop screwing. All right, and then once that's done, you can verify you did your clicks properly so they'll have a little bit of a rebound to them. You can see that on the right click there. It's how you want them to look. If your clicks are under tension, they'll sit down like this. And if they're over-tensioned, they'll stand up and they won't actually go down when you actuate them. So as long as they have kind of a natural buoyancy to them, you are good to go. And then next up, we can go ahead and reinstall our side buttons. Again, very easy to do. All you wanna do is roughly line these up in the side of the mouse's shell, just like that, and then press in on these two sides here to anchor them in just like that. All right, well, that's everything for the top shell. We also have the base shell all finished up and ready to go. All right, and then just like we saw in the OGM Pro V2, all we have to do to get the cloud shells that back together is basically just kind of line them up as best you can on the surface, just like that. And then just take your hands, sandwich them together, and that will clip the top and the bottom shell back in. Now, sometimes some clips may not go in and may require you to manually do them. So just run your thumb along the side of the mouse to make sure everything made proper contact. And then once everything's secured, you're good to go ahead and re-put in your base screws. Again, keep in mind, you will need the special Torx bit to do this. All right, and then once the base screws are back in, just run your thumb along the side just to verify everything made proper contact. And that is everything for taking apart the OGM Cloud V2, the Crimson Lion version in this case, or the Hawkeye V1 or any of the other named color ways that YZL has for this mouse. But overall, just like the Cloud V1, a fairly serviceable mouse. I dislike these uh, Torx screws on the bottom. These really should be Phillips heads, just like the rest of YZL's mice. I don't see a reason to use Torx screws. It's just kind of pointless. I don't really understand why they did that. And the way the battery is anchored on the inside is, again, a little interesting. I'm much more rather than seeing just like a flat battery design, but it is what it is. But overall, still a serviceable mouse like we've seen with all of YZL's previous mice, just not as serviceable as other other mice like the OGM Pro V2 was. But with that, that's everything for today's episode of Teardown. Thank you very much again to Wise Alvaro for sending over the Crimson Lion for me to review. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much to our channel members, UKI89, It Was Luck, Prince, Lunaris, and Mark World. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you'd like to support what I do here on the channel with the in-depth reviews and, of course, the Teardown Project, you can become a member here on YouTube for only two Canadian dollars. That is one of the best ways to directly support the channel, so thank you very much in advance for your support. And you can also use code MELON with a zero over at Lethal Gaming Gear, Mechies, Potent Gaming, and TJ Exclusives to save yourselves a couple dollars off your orders and help support the channel and everything I'm doing here. But that's everything for today. Thank you very much for watching my teardown of the OGM Cloud or Crimson Lion V2, and I'll catch you all in the next episode of Teardown. Peace.